Just like nucleophilic substitution, which has two key mechanisms, 1,2 elimination has two key mechanisms. And like nucleophilic substitution, those mechanisms are named to designate the number of reactants in a rate determining step, E1 and E2. In an E1 elimination reaction, the stereochemistry of the alkyl halide is immaterial. Generally, you make both alkene stereoisomers, E and C. This is easy to explain when you look carefully at the mechanism. The E1 reaction has two steps. The first is a unimolecular reaction where the leaving group leaves to make a carbocation. Because we're making a rather unstable carbocation, it takes quite a bit of energy. So this is the rate determining step, the slow step. And this is followed by a fast step where the proton is lost to make the alkene. So what accounts for the formation of two alkene stereoisomers? Well, this carbocation has a lifetime, and during that lifetime, there can be rotation around the carbon-carbon single bond you see there. That rotation gives rise to a lot of conformations. Two are particularly important. Take a look. Rotation about this bond can bring the hydrogen, which is sticking straight up in the plane of the screen, to a position that's sticking straight down in the plane of the screen. And that's really important because then that sigma bonding aligns with the empty p orbital on the adjacent carbon. This p orbital and the adjacent sigma bond have to line up to form the pi bond. When they do line up, the base can abstract that proton, either when it sticks straight up to form the pi bond or when it sticks straight down to form the pi bond. So this accounts for the formation of two stereoisomers. As the rotation occurs, the positions of 1 and 2 relative to us, the observer, change. 2, which is sticking toward us, rotates up and ends up sticking away from us. 1, sticking away from us, ends up sticking toward us. So loss of the proton and formation of the pi bond makes the two stereoisomers. Those groups 1 and 2 have switched orientations. When we look at the rates of these reactions, there's a very distinct rate dependency on whether the alkyl group is tertiary, secondary, or primary. The tertiary alkyl halides undergo E1 elimination rapidly. The secondary halides slowly, if at all, and primary halides don't undergo elimination by the E1 mechanism. Why is that? That's because the rate determining step involves the formation of a carbocation, and alkyl groups attached to the carbon of the carbocation stabilize that carbocation. When there are two alkyl groups attached to that carbon, in addition to the one that has the alpha carbon, we have a tertiary halide, and that carbocation is stabilized by those alkyl groups. A secondary alkyl halide only has one alkyl group attached here, which means that the carbocation is less stabilized. But when there are only hydrogens in these two positions, the carbocation isn't stable enough to be formed during E1 elimination. This is all illustrated by an energy diagram for the E1 mechanism. The reaction has two steps, so it has two humps. The first step is the rate determining step, so that hump is bigger. You can see the activation energy for the first step is much greater than the activation energy for the second step. And as we form the intermediate, a carbocation, the tertiary carbocation is more stable, so it's formed more readily. The secondary carbocation is less stable and formed more slowly. And the primary carbocation is so unstable it isn't formed. Because the transition states look a lot like carbocations, the alkyl substitution also stabilizes the transition state. So the activation energy leading to the more stable intermediate also is lower. Now that we've looked at all this, we can list several characteristics of the E1 elimination reaction. So here's our mechanism, and we know that the first step is the slow step, rate determining. The intermediate carbocation rather rapidly loses the proton to make the alkene. So looking at the E1 mechanism, it's a two-step reaction. It has first-order kinetics because there's only one reactant involved in the slow step. It's not stereospecific. We've seen that both stereoisomers of an alkene can be formed from one stereoisomer of the alkyl halide. But it can be stereoselective. As you would guess, the more stable alkene stereoisomer is formed more rapidly. The rate is affected by the 
leaving group. The better the leaving group, the faster the reaction. That makes sense. That carbon leaving group bond is being broken in the rate determining step. And the reaction rate is sensitive to the structure. Tertiary alkyl halides react much more rapidly than secondary alkyl halides. And primary and methyl alkyl halides don't react by the E1 reaction mechanism at all. Let me show you one more thing, because we looked at cyclohexyl halides for the E2 elimination. Let's look at analogous cyclohexyl halides for the E1 mechanism. Like the E2 reaction mechanism, when the halide and the hydrogen that's being lost are trans to each other, the more stable alkene is formed. This alpha hydrogen is trans to the halide, so they both can be anti-coplanar. We see the same preference for an E1 reaction. The more highly substituted, the more stable alkene is favored. Now look at the compound with the opposite stereochemistry. Now the hydrogen is cis to the halide, and they can't be anti-coplanar. But for the E1 reaction, it doesn't matter. The halide leaves first, a planar carbocation is formed, then the proton is lost in a second step. The stereochemistry of the starting halide is immaterial, so these two cyclohexyl halide stereoisomers show the same preference for making the more stable alkene.